You hear their mothers talk about them. This is his ministry. This is his ministry. Oh, this is I believe this is I a mission. Swiveling in front of 17,000 girls is his Listen. ministry. Only a month. Next story is going to make her go, ah! Because new kids on the block are coming up. If there isn't a little daughter or teenage girl in your life, you might never have heard of the five young men in our next story. On the other hand, if you do have a teeny bopper around, then you probably haven't escaped these boys. And it's a good guess that no matter what you say, your youngster will insist that you stay tuned to us for the next few minutes. In the last year, these five Boston boys, ages 17 to 21, have made young female America pine for them. So, we ask the questions. Who are these boys? Where do they come from? And just what do they want with our daughters? Are you ready, ready for John? John? What about, what about, what about, what about John? John? Let's hear it from, 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 from the new kids on the block. Don't think what you're seeing here is just another bunch of crazy kids. This is a very carefully packaged product that has produced worldwide sales of 15 million records. Their second album went platinum seven times. They've had six top 10 hit singles in a row and were named by Billboard as the top pop group of 1989. My feelings for you. I wanted to put together the uh, ultimate dream idol of America and the world. The ultimate. Maurice Starr has come pretty close. Starr is a 36-year-old Boston record producer. He knew exactly what white teenage America wanted to hear. It's not surprising. Five years earlier, he knew what black teen America wanted and delivered that as well. He put together new edition and quickly took them platinum. But he kept saying, if he had a white act like this, he could capture the whole market. And presto, in 1985, the new kids were created from the same formula as New Edition. My viewpoint was to first put the guys together to, to first find a look and then find out could they sing some because I've always felt I could teach anybody how to sing. Anybody. So I just needed to know certain things. Did you have some dance experience? Did you have an urban background? Did you mess with any drugs? If you did that, this is the wrong place for you. The five boys were comfortable with black culture and music. They'd been exposed to it in their working class Boston neighborhoods. We grew up listening to the music that we do now. When I went to school or when I went home, I was listening to rap music and stuff like that all day long when I was you know, nine years old, eight years old. And that's music that I fell in love with, and that's music that I wanted to do. Starr had a black choreographer work with them and rehearse them in an all-black neighborhood. His strategy was to sell his new kids to the black audience first. They stayed there, and they got real good. At one time, they were the biggest drawing white act in the black community. But the crucial test was yet to come. New kids were to perform for an audience notoriously hard to please. The world-famous Apollo Theater, where dreams are born and legends are made. They first walk out, you know, people in Apollo start looking, oh, man, what's going on? You know, some people ready to get up and start walking out, so they kick off right stuff. It was on. They, the black people first was like, and then they couldn't contain themselves. It was the first of many successful appearances in Harlem. It was one of the most exciting times of my life. It was, it was magic. It was like, I, after that, I knew we were going to make it no matter what. Come to the band. 
But the question the boys keep hearing is, will they last? Are they just untalented puppets controlled by Maurice Starr? Sure, he's a man who, who definitely had the master plan, you know, but a general can't fight a war without some fighters, you know? And Maurice isn't on stage every night fighting the battle we are. This is the hype. How can you not love it? Nothing would ever be the same again for the boys or their mothers. When did everything change? When I got a mink coat for my Joseph at All 15 right. years old. That's when I knew I, that something yeah, was right. going right. right. Jordan called me and said, Ma, don't take any more work. I was about to take on a new client. He said, don't do it. You don't have to do it. Yeah. In the beginning, this mom didn't believe they'd be a success at all. I thought um, there was a lot of... Um, I don't know, the boys would say jive associated with this. I was skeptical. I, I didn't want people playing around with my kid's head and, and telling him he was going to be the biggest thing going when for year after year, really not a whole lot was happening. Today, when new kids on the block are on the cover of any teen magazine, it will probably sell out. Still, their mothers are not impressed. I think it's a riot. <laughs> I mean, when I look at Johnny Bearchested, this is in itself is funny. Um, and he'll kid himself about it. You know, he'll do a couple little poses and say, it's not even chicken pickings here. Chicken pickings it's not. In the last year, J.C. Penney stores alone have done close to $20 million with new kids' boutiques. boys are now sex symbols, their moms don't hesitate to let their ideas on certain matters be known. I saw this girl lean over the pool table, and I said, oh my God, there's cleavage and jump. And jump. So I called up CBS. I said, I want to talk to the president. And he says, take it easy, lady. I've only been president 11 days. <laughs> no, I want yes. Joseph to be a priest. And this is really this messing is up his, my this is his ministry. This is his ministry. This is his ministry. Oh, my God. I believe this is I a mission. Swiveling in front of 17,000 girls is his ministry. You know, we, we're not preachers. You know, we'd like, you know, we kind of teachers, but we're just trying to reach. Oh,